Well, there's no doubt that dowsing is contentious and I can understand why many people think it's nonsense, but often those who criticise haven't tried it for themselves. In my videos, when I douse, you can see my hands move, so a lot of people criticise me for making the rods move intentionally. They think that they've spotted some kind of failed attempt at magician's sleight of hand. Well, you're going to be seeing my hands make movements again in this series of videos as I teach you the first steps to dowsing. And the fact that my hands do move, and I'm not aware of it, is the most probable explanation as to why and how dowsing works. Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. I help people create improved well-being by reducing geopathic stress and connecting them to their intuition for a new understanding of life. We do that by using meditation, mindfulness and dowsing. So if you want to nurture a practical, spiritual and intuitive viewpoint on life, click subscribe, click the grey bell icon to get notified every time I upload a video or do a live Q&A. Now, this is the first in a series of short videos to help you try dowsing for yourselves. Today, we're gonna to make a set of starter dowsing rods, and I'll be giving you a few tips on how to get that first response from your rods. But first, I wanna make it clear that dowsing to me isn't mystical and it isn't mysterious. Critics cite what is known as the idiomotor effect as a reason why dowsing doesn't work. Uh, Wiki describes the idiomotor effect as a concept in hypnosis and psychological research most commonly used in reference to the process whereby a thought or mental image brings about a seemingly reflexive or automatic muscular reaction, often of minuscule degree and potentially outside the awareness of the subject. It continues to say that as in reflexive responses to pain, the body sometimes reacts reflexively with an idiomotor effect to ideas alone, without the person consciously deciding to take action. Now, to me personally, I think that that explanation that critics use to dismiss dowsing is actually the only way that dowsing can actually work. Dowsing has to be a process of picking up information from the subconscious and it's the involuntary muscular movements that make the rods or a pendulum move. It's what the dowser sees in their head or experiences in their body that is actually the dowsing mechanism. The rods or the pendulum simply reflects that perception. And it's about the connection to the subconscious information, not really about the rods or the pendulum. They're just the key to start the process. In the end, when you get experienced at it, it's like they signal to the body, right, you're gonna do some dowsing, prepare for it. The most common tool for dowsing is either a set of rods or a pendulum. Just go with whichever draws your attention. Some people prefer to start with rods and some people prefer to start with a pendulum. Today we're going to be using rods. Now these are my rods which were made for me by Hamish Miller, my mentor, and you can see they actually have got flat handles. Hamish always said that that helped improve the response as you were dousing. These are not for everybody, not everybody likes these sort of rods because they're quite big, they're quite heavy, and actually they're quite difficult to hold in a way. You have to hold them quite precariously like this, which is a bit peculiar. You can find rods of all sorts on websites of either the British Society of Dowsers or the American Society of Dowsers. But as a beginner, it's easy just to make your own basic set so that you get started. And once you feel more confident in what you're doing, and if you feel that it's actually worth investing in a pair of rods, then you can upgrade to a decent set. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a set of rods for dowsing, just using a bit of old lightweight wire that we actually found in the garden here. Most people usually, once they do this themselves at home, they'll start with a wire coat hanger. It's just something that gives you a little bit more substance. This is really lightweight and flimsy, but this will do for the demonstration. But a coat hanger will give you a feeling of something actually that you're holding, that you're holding something more tangible. So take your coat hanger. And what we want to do is just simply cut this in half, right? So a pair of pliers, just obviously be a bit careful, cut that in half. And then you've got two bits of wire and all you want to do is to simply bend, let's bend this end, bend a bit. <laughs> oh dear, 
I can see I, I can see I'm going to get criticisms about this, but there we go. So you bend a bit of wire to a right angle, and you've got this really Heath Robinson sort of affair, which you just hold. There it is. I mean, it's just simple, simple rod, but you can hold that in your hand, balance it, right, and then you can ask a question. Am I standing up and the rod will move slightly? So there we go. I mean, it's very, very, very gentle there. But anyway, we'll come on to that. So you do that twice. So you want two rods, basically as close to each other as possible. I mean, these really are very Heath Robinson, but it's just to illustrate how simple it is to make a pair and just give dousing a go for yourself. So you're going to start by asking questions that you know the answers to. Simply ask of yourself or the wider universe if you want to, am I standing up? Am I standing up? And see what happens. What you're looking for is a response from the rods. And in the first instance, it might be a really hesitant, a, a tiny movement of one of them coming across. And that's okay. And if you actually get that movement for a yes, then that's okay too but just be consistent and keep your eyes on how it might change as you get more confident. Because what usually happens if you start off getting that for a yes, then you will actually end up at some point getting that for a yes. If your rods moved together when you tried that, then fabulous. But if they didn't, is it a case that you have tried dousing before and you've got no response in the past? So maybe now you expect nothing to happen. Just think about that a little bit if you actually are still continuing to get no response from your rods. So don't let your mind block you. Just relax and forget about all those times in the past that it hasn't worked for you. It took me days and days and days to try to get my rods to move and it doesn't always work first time. So in the end, when I was doing it, I had to really focus on what I was looking for, what I was asking, and really focus on what I considered at the time to be the universe out there that was answering the question and really I said to myself, if I don't get an answer this time, if they don't move this time, I'm gonna put them away. And I asked the question and I got a response on that very last time. I was really expressing my frustration in that instance. So it helps to get some emotion with it sometimes. Dowsing requires a different mind state. It seems to require our brain waves to be in a different pattern of flow than our usual day-to-day -day activity. It's no good just picking up a set of rods in the middle of doing your office work or making a cup of tea and asking a question in the same state of mind that you would have been answering the phone in. Try meditating before you do the dowsing and then try the dowsing again. Dowsing is not about watching the rods. Empty your mind. Focus on what you're seeking. And in this case, because you're asking, am I standing up? Then your gentle and relaxed focus should be on your body. If you're still unable to get a response, are you simply trying too hard? Because like most things in the spiritual realms, dowsing is about relaxed focus. It requires focus, but not really a massive amount of effort. Once you get any sort of response from the simple question of, am I standing up? Then it's time for you to practice, practice, practice. And in video two, we'll look at how to find the most powerful and most beneficial earth energy power center in your own home and how to find earth energy lines. So do check it out once it's been uploaded. In the meantime, I hope that this one has helped. And do take care and look after yourselves. See you soon.